Hello, welcome back to our nutrition webinar series here with the SJC Wellness team. I'm Tony Wright, I'm a wellness intern under Jenna Chase, and this week we're gonna bring you through the fundamentals of fueling your body for our second episode in the series. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up our PowerPoint for the evening. Give me one second here. Share my screen. Taking a little bit to load. There we go. Come on. All right. Here we go. Fundamentals of fueling your body for success. So fueling your body revolves around five different areas. We're going to talk about clean eating, eating often, hydrating, recovering, and your mindset around eating. So let's start and talk about some clean eating. So eating clean means eating foods that are the least processed. So foods in their most natural form, think like whole foods, fruits, vegetables, and the such. So you want to keep foods in their most natural form, either from the earth or animal, if you're eating, if you're eating meat. Um, and then we can talk about nutrient density when we talk about clean eating. So nutrient density is the relationship of the amount of nutrients that a food has to the amount of calories it has. Um, you want to focus on choosing foods um, that have high amounts of nutrients in relation to their caloric value. So, again, thinking mainly like those fruits and vegetables kind of things. Um, and then we touched on these last week with the macronutrients, but a good thing to think about with them is carbohydrates are your fuel, your protein is what you use to build, and your fat is your energy. Again, we talked about that last week, fat being the most calorically dense macronutrient at 9 calories per gram. So let's talk about eating often. So I love this slide because I love to eat often. So the reason it's important to eat often is you want to keep a steady flow of energy for your body um, and sustainability with that. So it, eating every two to three hours allows your body to have a steady rate of energy. Um, for adequate and constant energy levels, the goal is to maintain healthy blood glucose levels, so your blood sugar levels. And you want to do this with eating nutrient-dense foods and complex carbs. So let's talk about hydration. So a lot on this slide, but we'll, we'll get through it. So it's vital to stay hydrated throughout the day. Your body is composed of roughly 60 to 65% water, which helps with many vital functions in your body, which include providing shape and life within every cell, the delivery of fuel to muscles, lubricating and cushioning your joints, helping with muscle contraction and tone, helping with metabolism and the digestion, your brain function, and regulating temperature. Dehydration, on the other hand, causes these functions to suffer and impairs your health, your ability to recover from illnesses and athletic performances. There's a 2% decrease in weight due to fluid loss, and that can impair physical and mental performances. And again, we touched on um, water as a macronutrient just because we have to consume it in such large amounts. And for men, that's roughly 13 cups of water a day. And for women, that's about nine cups of water a day. Let's talk about recovery. So nutrition can help a lot with recovery, actually. Again, we're going to talk about carbohydrate being that fuel. And in the situation after working out where you're recovering, refuel, and protein rebuild those muscles you just tear. So getting a combination of carbohydrates and proteins within 30 minutes of your training will assist with the recovery process. This will help reduce the amount of time needed in between sessions and also helps to decrease your risk of injury. Let's talk about mindset. So you need to focus on mindset and behavior. Um, some things can make this change easier for you, such as a simple list of healthy foods to pick from or easy guides on proportion sizes. The goal is to help you focus on your habitual intake and the results of your nutrition habits. Um, uh, something you can look into is the 80-20 rule, which promotes balance and the inclusion of all foods. So consume foods you know will give you nutrients and sustainable energy you need 80% of the time. And then I, I say this lightly, consume whatever it is you want it, in moderation the other 20% of the time. Just make sure you're keeping yourself in check with what's going in that other 20% of the time. Let's talk about grains. So Carbohydrates, fuel for your brain and muscles. Main sources, they come from breads, cereals, grains, beans, fruits, and vegetables. 
Again, we want to look for our foods in their most natural form, so least processed. Um, the best choices for carbohydrates will have more than three grams of fiber per serving. Might even go as far as say five grams. Um, the top five grains generally to think are oatmeal, brown rice, high fiber cereal, quinoa, and 100% whole wheat bread. Protein, the less legs, the better. So protein is the building blocks building blocks for our bodies. Um, they help us with repair, especially muscle recovery after working out. Um, main sources, lean meats, fish, eggs, beans, soy, and legumes. What you want to look for, lean protein sources. A good rule of thumb to think of it is the less legs on the animal, the better it is for you. Um, and definitely include some plant proteins in your diet. Uh, good recommendations are to try to include a lean protein source with every meal. And the serving size for protein with meat is about the size of a deck of cards. Um, and we talked about amino acids last week as well, the building blocks of protein. You have nine essential amino acids, the one that your body can't make and you need to consume in your diet. Um, protein sources that are complete proteins, having those nine essential amino acids are animal, animal foods such as meat. And then um, for vegetables, there's quinoa as an option. There's also 11 non-essential amino acids, which our body is capable of making on its own. And we also have a group called the conditionally essential amino acids. So these are amino acids that our body can make, but in times of stress or lack of sleep or lack of food, it can struggle. So you can also incorporate those into your diet as well. So fats, you gotta eat those healthy fats. So healthy fats equal energy density. Being that nine calories per gram, that's that's a lot of energy in fats. Um, healthy fats provide energy to help regulate blood sugar, improve cholesterol, and they keep you feeling full. Omega-3 fatty acids improve cognition, decrease inflammation, and enhance heart health. These are considered essential because your body doesn't make them. You must get these through food. Um, these can be found in fatty fish like salmon, trout, tuna, and it's also found in flax seeds and walnuts. Um, top five fats to think about, salmon, oils like flax and olive, flaxseed products, avocados, pecans, walnuts, and almonds. What color foods do to help your body? So yellow foods help to optimize your brain functions. Green foods rejuvenate musculature and bone. Orange foods support skin and mucosal tissues. Red foods support heart and your circulatory system. White foods enhance immune system, lymph system, and cellular recovery. And purple foods promote microcirculation. So you want to aim to have at least three different colors at each meal. People have always told me, try to eat the rainbow. So that's what they're kind of referring to here. You want to get the benefits from the different colored foods. Um, over the course of the day, you want to try to consume five servings of fruits and vegetables. Eating the rainbow. So here are some examples of uh, foods of each color. Um, so for yellow foods, you have the star fruits, yellow figs, golden kiwi, yellow pear, yellow pepper, squash, and sweet corn. Green foods are green leafy vegetables, avocados, broccoli, kiwi. Orange food, apricots, cantaloupes, carrots, nectarines. Red foods, you have cherries, cranberries, strawberries, beets, red onions, and tomatoes. White foods, such as banana, garlic, ginger, mushroom, and onions. And then purple foods, such as blackberries, blueberries, plums, eggplants, and grapes. So some nutrition rules to live by. Eat the rainbow often. Choose a variety of colors for the biggest benefit. You want to incorporate those yellows, red, green, purple, white, all the colors to try to get those benefits. Um, and then when we're talking about protein again, that reminder, the less legs, the better. Include a lean protein source with each meal. Remember, for meat, the size should be about the size of a deck of cards. Um, eat healthy fats. Include healthy fats in your diet like olive oil, nuts, natural nut butters, seeds, avocado, fish, flaxseed, and flaxseed oil. Eat breakfast every day. This can be something a couple of us struggle with, but when you eat 30 minutes within waking up, you actually jumpstart your metabolism. This gives you more energy to get your day going. Uh, stay hydrated. I'm always going to hammer home that you need to drink your water and stay hydrated. Dehydration equals decreased performance and try to think of drinking at least three liters of non-caloric beverages every day. Uh, supplement wisely. So you always want to have your 
most of your vitamins and minerals and stuff that you require in your diet come from actual food, but so fuel first and supplement second. The best way to absorb vitamins and minerals is through your diet, not pills and gummies. Um, common areas that people may need to supplement though are vitamin D, um, iron, and then B12 for vegetarians and vegans. And then sleep, also very important in the process of nutrition and recovery for the body. Aim for at least eight hours of sleep a night. If you are unable to get eight hours a night, try to take time to have power naps. This will allow your body to repair and recover. And we have some tips before workouts for you. Um, generally speaking, you should fuel up to two hours before exercising. So getting a meal in in that time frame and then letting it digest a little bit. Um, hydrate with water. Eating healthy carbohydrates such as whole wheat toast, low fat or fat free yogurt, whole grain pasta, or brown rice. I'm sorry, that says brown rice. Uh, avoid saturated fats and healthy protein. These take longer to digest and take away oxygen and energy, delivering blood from your muscles. And if you have five to 10 minutes before exercising, you can eat a piece of fruit like an apple or banana. These simple carbs digest quickly and give you quick energy. And then we have a little activity for you here. So you can create a day's worth of food to maximize your energy output. So we have some options for you to choose from for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then some snacks. Um, I know we can't really do this in a discussion kind of based way here, being that this is a recording, but for breakfast, I would probably look at um, oatmeal and a fruit salad. I might go for an almond or soy-based yogurt, personally, that's kind of my preference. Um, lunch, I uh, would probably pick avocado toast. I love avocado toast. And for those of you who eat fish, thinking uh, the less legs, the better for that protein source, that would be a good choice. Dinner, eggplant, parmesan, salmon, salad, and brown rice sound like the best options out of there. I might, might skip over the lean red meat. Um, just aiming for the less legs, the better kind of thing. And then for snacks, bananas, walnuts, almonds, chips, pecans, and carrots, I'd probably just avoid the chips, but knowing myself, I might include them here and there. So that is what we have for the second webinar. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. Again, we do this every Thursday throughout the month of March for Healthy Nutrition Month. So that's at 7 p.m. on Thursdays. Um, if you're part of SJC, we send out an email every Thursday to remind you guys. You just got to email us back at wellness at sjcme.edu, and we will reserve your spot for the session. So I hope to see some of you there. If not, keep on watching these, and I hope you can learn something helpful. Thank you.